Welcome. I am Dr. Patrice Berry, licensed psychologist, and here I share legal and entertainment news from a psychological perspective. Really excited to be here. Really glad to have this conversation. We are going to be talking about Paul Ferguson and Sarah, because the chat is already lively. Sarah asked a really great question about has he already been sentenced? No. His sentencing, I'm almost positive, is scheduled for February 26th, and I will be covering it. Um, it's scheduled for later in February. He was originally scheduled to be sentenced the same day as his mother, Shanda, but they ended up pushing his back. And I wonder if they needed more time to maybe do some of his pre-sentencing information so here's a little quick backstory for this case. This is, I want to say, my third or fourth video covering this particular case. So Paul Ferguson here and his mother, Shanda Vander Ark. Now, in my mind, his mother, Shanda, when I look at culpability, I personally, just me as a person, I personally hold her more culpable. He was significantly involved. And this video has changed some people's mind about him. Now, as we take a look at this, I just encourage everyone to breathe. This case is, this is one of the more difficult cases. And I think what makes it more difficult for me is the fact that Timothy didn't survive. So I covered the Ferreter case and that child ran away. RF in that case, he ran away and people were able to learn of what was happening to him and he survived. With the Frankie case, one of the children escaped. We and still horrific horrific case. These are these are horrific things. Timothy in this case did not survive. And the details of this case are so bad that when the judge, so I covered Shanda's sentencing, and when the judge is going over everything, YouTube, what restricted my video, <laughs> YouTube was like, I don't know if we want to put ads directly next to this detailed description of uh, the T word that we use when we, y'all can put it in the chat. I can't say it on the video, but that T word that like prisoners of war experience. Timothy experienced horrific, horrible things that shouldn't happen to any child, yet less happen by a family member, happen by individuals who are supposed to love and care about you. I want to make a special note because in my comments, someone specifically asked me to talk about whether, um, talk about, because people are really coming hard and I saw it in, in my comments as well. People have strong opinions about the other siblings, the siblings that spoke at Shanda sentencing, to me, they did a phenomenal job. Something I want to remind you all about, porcher. I'm going to start saying porcher, okay? And and I have I have a new swoosh for, for what just happened. So let me go on ahead and let y'all know what just happened. <laughs> we just had a squirrel moment. Porcher. So I can, I can say that. But then people are going to get mad in the comments about why. So... Y'all just know some words you just can't say on YouTube, okay? So I, I can't say the word. Y'all can put it in the chat. Um, With this case, going back with, I want everyone to remember that the sister in this case, she was 17 years old, okay? She's two years older, older than Timothy. She was 17 years old when this happened, okay? The brother, he's... Mar so like now, so in these situations, we can engage in some black and white thinking where I apply my situation, what I would do in a situation to somebody else's, like, I don't, I don't know their life. Okay. Even as a psychologist, even as someone that knows about this stuff, 
I don't know exactly why any of them did what, what they did or didn't do. The one thing that I do know is that when you're raised in a difficult family, so Shanda seems difficult. I'm just being honest. Like, would you want to be around Shanda? Like, honestly, like, would you keep in touch with her? Like, she seems very critical. She seems very just, I don't know that I would have kept in touch with her. And I know firsthand that sometimes allowing your feelings for one person. So like, if I have a lot of negative emotion toward one person in my family, that emotion can bleed over and it might impact my relationship with other people. And to me, the siblings in this case, they, they feel guilty about this. Okay. They, this breaks their heart. They wish that they could take all this back. They wish that, that, that they had checked on them. I'm sure the oldest brother probably wishes that the dad had reached out to him like, Hey, can you take, um, Timothy? But that didn't happen. I also learned some things from this interview that the dad was, I think, divorced or getting divorced. Like the whole situation is very, very complicated. A lot of people have a lot of feelings about dad too. I'm not here. Like he hasn't told his story and I don't think he ever will. Uh, I'm sure. I don't know that he was ever interviewed by the police. I, I don't know if we'll ever find out any of that information. This crosses state lines. And I think people don't realize like the state of Michigan, it would be hard for them to try dad for something for a court order that's in Oklahoma. And I don't even know if dad was living in Oklahoma. Like child protection issues get very, very complicated. Okay. And so that's what I want to say. That's what I want to say there. Uh, thank you to anyone that's going to watch on, uh, that's going to watch on replay. I'm going to have another little random moment, Sarah, just for you. Okay. So you are always my top commenter. I turned off the all caps. <laughs> you were getting, you can, you can do all, you can scream in the chat all you want. I turned off the, the all caps. I, I really felt bad when you got muted last week. So all caps is off because once, once you got muted, I couldn't Nightbot, I, I couldn't unmute you. So that's what happened. And the last video, we also talked about enmeshment and within families, emotions can get a little blurry when there's a dysfunctional toxic system. And, um, it's really, really difficult. So we are going to dive into this video. I will give you a heads up because I want you to pay attention to how Paul talks about things, how he answers questions. Now I think Shanda prepared him because I think she told him to say and not say certain things. And I don't know if we're going to catch it switch in this video. I'm, I'm not sure. I haven't, I haven't watched the full thing. I have a link. Duty Ron is a former detective. I think he's former, former, former detective. Uh, that's where I, I got some of this information. And then I have the link to the original video. And that's the one that I'm playing here is on Rottweiler, I believe. Like there's a another channel that posted the, the full video. This video starts with uh, Shanda. Mul uh, I just, I, I can't play her. <laughs> I'm so done with her. Y'all know I am, I am done with her. I have nothing else to say or think about with her. And so... Oh, okay. um, so we are, we are not going to show that part at all. I'm going to make this full screen. Okay. I'm going to make this bigger. There we go. All right. So let's take a look at Paul. He's very much yes. in control of everything. Yes. So the, I know that that night Timothy did eat because we had pizza. He had three slices. Oh, I want to stop it for just a second because oh, sorry, that's okay. Um, I don't want to talk anything specific about the case just yet. Uh, since you, since the police showed up at your house and yeah, they brought you down here, I want to provide you some rights before we talk about that sort of thing. What I do want you to know though is that we went through the phones, okay? Okay, and we're beginning to go through the phones and. There's a lot of evidence in the phones, and I know that you're kind of aware of communication between yourself and your mother. Yes. And those sort of things. And that's kind of what I want to talk to you about. Yeah. But, um, I mean, certainly those are very serious things that you guys are talking about. Yeah. And 
But, I mean, from what I saw, that sounds like you were compassionate in that you yes. cared about him and you sent some pictures that were like, he's looking too skinny and we, we need to feed him. And, you know, so sometimes you get frustrated, but at the end of yeah. the day, you kept coming back to like, to caring. Um, yeah. But the end result of that, he passed away, right? And he passed away from not eating food. Yeah. Um, so, but I, I want you to be aware of this stuff, okay? So these are your random rights, right? So you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can or will be used against you in the court of law. You have the right to talk to an attorney and the right to his presence before or during any questioning. Okay. The full link for anyone that watches on replay and gets mad about me interrupting, please check out the full video without my interruptions. The one thing that I will, how he's sitting, to me, in my opinion, isn't typical of a 20-year-old. Uh, he's coming off a little childlike to me. That's just in my opinion. And I think he's trying to not get in trouble. Okay. And in court, to me, he presented a little bit different. Someone asked a great question about Paul saying that he has reactive attachment disorder. I'm going to wait to comment on any diagnosis until we get the pre-sentencing report. And I'm, I'm not going to personally get it. If any of y'all get it, I am info at drpatriceberry.com. It's listed right in right in my channel um, about me. If there are, if anybody sees that before it comes out publicly, you can feel free to, to send that to me. Uh, but I believe they're going to talk about that during his sentencing in February. So I want to talk more about whatever his diagnosis is then. I, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know what his his diagnoses are. I will say, and I do want to make a special note, that individuals, most people that experience harm by someone else do not end up harming other people. There are people that are harmed by others that harm other people. Somebody asked me a great question about sadism and what um, what what can cause that. And something that can cause a person to develop sadistic traits is being, and, and that it doesn't excuse it. So just because two things are correlated or just because it, it one thing typically happens. So most people, like I said, that experience harm in childhood do not end up harming people as adults. There are some people that get this warped eye view this warped idea of love, this warped idea that love is pain, I don't know, or like love is control, they get this weird, weird idea, and they are at a greater risk to harm other people. Okay, let's, and then people do also comment on how uh, skinny he looks as well. I don't know if he's ever been tested for, because his build reminds me of somebody with hyperthyroidism. So I, I don't, so hyperthyroidism is when your thyroid is working too, too fast. And it's, it's an endocrine issue and um, it can present almost like bipolar disorder. Like it can, the person can seem really hyper, can be all over the place. They have a lot of trouble gaining weight. They have trouble keeping weight on. They're excessively hungry. And um, and it's because their metabolism is working way, way, way too fast. It does not sound like Shanda restricted his food in any way. And then also some people, they're just leaner, like their natural body builds is just a little bit, a little bit smaller. I don't, I don't know what causes him to be like that. Uh, when he testified in court, he did still seem uh, pretty sl slender. Like, I, I just think that's just how, how he is. Um, but it did make me think of hyperthyroidism, not saying he does or doesn't have it. It's just something that I think about. All right, let's go back to the video. If you cannot afford to hire an attorney, one would be appointed to a public expense to represent you before any question. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, when we talk about, I just jump right into it. I know that we talked yesterday. Yeah. I know that not everything that we talked about was the truth yesterday. That's okay. Yeah. You don't have to feel bad. You don't have to feel guilty about not telling the truth to me. Okay. I want you to just focus on yourself right now. Think about what's best for you. Yeah. And, and let's try to get to the truth of what really happened with your brother because he deserves that. Yeah. Um, 
I mean, there's clearly a lot of messages about stuff that you guys are doing with him about what he's eating, about restricting his food. How does that, how did that all work? Like, what was he allowed to eat? We stopped the food restrictions recently. Elaine, turn on. Sorry. Uh, so I do think that, um, so this part's the lie. Okay. So just a heads up. We, we all know now he's, he's, he's about to lie. And I think he's lying to try to protect himself and then to also try to protect his mother. And so, yes. Um, so some people have thought up maybe fetal alcohol. We will, we won't really know why. Um, I have worked with people that have that particular syndrome. Um, I'm, I'm not sure. So let's keep going. Because we had noticed this then we wanted to get that back on. We didn't want any of this. We never wanted him to be injured or hurt. I loved him so much. Yeah, I can tell that. I can yes. certainly tell that. When you say we, you talk about your mother. Yes, she uh, she loved him. We wanted what's best. Yeah. The thing is, he was stuck in the past. Okay. What's up? Okay. So I also want to talk about Stockholm Syndrome, too, because those words sound like Shanda's words to me. To me. Now, I, I, I could be wrong. To me, I think... Because Shanda, she could be a little OCD-like. I don't know if she has personality. I don't know if she has full-blown OCD. But she just seems extremely obsessive and just very, very controlling. And I could see her just berating him, like Paul, constantly about, he's doing this wrong, he's doing that wrong, he's doing this wrong. And... And somebody could kind of turn on somebody else, like do right, almost like still that she leaves me alone. So, and now I, we're 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 gonna keep going. Um, we're gonna keep going. Ugh, we're gonna keep going. So, so you stopped the food restriction. When did that kind of happen? Like ballpark that for me. Two weeks, approximately. We we were hoping that we could get enough where he would be safe and then we could continue to add it back to where we wouldn't have to worry and we could... What were the what were the restrictions? We made sure that it was still something that gave him enough calories and everything. We, it was rice or bread and like I said last week, he got pizza. Okay. What were the, what were they in place for, like in the first place? Sneaking food over and over and over. Okay. We, we've tried everything. We were nice. We had different consequences, but he just okay. he never listened. What were some of the other types of consequences? Like, and he's talking almost like, but I think he was put in a caregiver role because I think he was the one that had to do some of the ice baths and he was the one that had to do all these things. He's to me, he's not talking like a brother. He's talking like. Like it was his responsibility and and his job, and he's the enforcer. And to me, Shanda's the one that made him the enforcer. To me, like that's just that's that's how I feel. Um, now, so no situation is like we we sometimes look at these situations and we just see black or white, good or bad. And I think there is some gray. For me with Paul, there's some gray. I do think based on some of this, I am, I do think he should get some jail time. Uh, let me look up. Uh, so while this is playing, I'm going to look up what the maximum um, penalty for first degree child harm, what that is. And uh, yes, she made him kind of like a co-parent. But like, this is his brother. So like, that is parentification in a way that's like, but it was almost like Paul was replacing her injured husband. And like, and there are all types of allegations in the chat about Shanda. Like, I'm not, I'm not in this chat, but like that other video. <laughs> and there people have said, thrown out all kinds of things. I do not know what's true. I do not know what's not. I do believe that Timothy was not as severe as they make him sound. I don't think he was as bad 
I, I think there was no way he could do right. They were severely restricting his food and he was hungry. And any hungry person is going to do what they can to get food. And they kept him from interacting and engaging with the outside world. I could see, and I don't know if this is true or not, but let's say Timothy was on the phone with somebody else. I could see them being right there. They recorded him everywhere. I, I don't think he had any way to let somebody know that, that he wasn't okay. And so that's where, if you do have a co-parent, I would set up a, a password with, with your child. <laughs> For like, like, mom, I forgot my pajamas. And and not even just for co-parents, but if my child is going to a sleepover or if they're going somewhere, I want them to have a password that, that they can tell me where I know I'm not okay. I need you to come and get me now. Where if they say, I forgot my my pajamas, I know, oop, okay. Like, and so set up whatever, whatever. <laughs> Whatever situation you have, I'm gonna have another random moment. I'm not gonna do the swoop for it. Um, so, uh, um, Sarah, I'm glad that you and you and Nightbot have um, that you've forgiven Nightbot, and Nightbot has forgiven you, and y'all have mo moved forward <laughs> into peaceful bliss. No, I'm just joking. All right, I try to lighten some of this up. This is incredibly heavy, and I will tell you all after doing on Tuesday. So I did the Michelle Traconis video and that was very heavy. And then I jumped right into this video and who, who this, this one, this one hit me hard and I was not expecting it to hit me as hard as it did. And that's why I took a step back and I just focused on self-care, <laughs> like for my, my own self-care because, um, and on top of that, like I had a bit of a heavy week professionally. And so I just, I just had to take a break. And originally when somebody asked me to look at this, my first answer to Phoenix, my first answer was no, <laughs> I don't want nothing to do with none of these people anymore. I'm sorry. I, I mean, every word of it. I laugh to keep from crying. Like I did, I did not want to, to, to do this. This is painful. Okay. Because I try to keep a non judgmental attitude and non judgment doesn't mean, so I see right and wrong. I don't try to ascribe good or bad. Like I don't, I don't ascribe a moral thing to it personally. And that's just from my clinical training. And then also because there's pain and then there's suffering and suffering is my interpretation of it. And if I start trying to dive too deep into Shanda's head, I'm, no, no, I'm not. Mm -mm, nope, I'm not, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> and so uh, please take care of yourself as you're doing this, as you're watching. Uh, I personally cleaned, like I, I watched, I just watched some, some funny stuff, some just positive stuff. Uh, we're watching Breaking Bad right now too. Like, cause I never watched the series when it, when it first came out, we finished Better Call Saul and now we're, we're going through, uh, Breaking Bad. And, and even last night I asked my husband, I was like, I need, I need a break from, from, from Breaking Bad. And we, we switched to, to, to something else. Um, I will say, uh, it's difficult with state laws if, cause if y'all notice Kevin Frankie wasn't charged with anything because he didn't know. Now, if they could prove that dad knew and dad didn't stop it, then that could potentially be something. I, I don't know all the details because I know she signed over her parental rights. I believe she willingly agreed to give up custody. I, I don't know if dad technically broke laws. I'm not a lawyer. Remember y'all? I'm not, I'm not a lawyer. Shanda was not supposed to have custody of of Timothy. Paul came to her at 18 after his relationship with his dad got so bad. And there might be some stuff with dad. I'm just being like there might but I don't know that. I don't know. I don't know. Everybody needs their their safe space and if he had been in school, I do think there would have been a CPS report and I think Shanda knew that. Because of Shanda's experience with CPS, because that's what the sister talked about, the fact that they were removed by, by CPS. We don't know how CPS got involved, who was the one that called. But some of these messages are, because um, I think the house was 
in a bit of a was was a bit of a mess. I I think the house was was bad on on the inside, and they would they wouldn't let uh, little man G they wouldn't let his family inside the house, and uh, Shanda's rights for G were terminated. So after her her sentencing. And, and isn't that interesting? So they could not, even after she was found guilty, they did not terminate her parental rights legally until she was sentenced. And now she has, she has no parental rights for, for G. Okay. Uh, let's keep going. Um, like prior to, prior to, like, are we talking like, we did take away his devices because that was also because he wouldn't stay on his school sites and would just go and try and play games or watch YouTube. Okay. He was, the thing is, he should have been held back so much. Yeah. But he passed all of his final exams. So I don't think it was my stepmother. My stepmother was amazing. Yeah. But I believe it was my father's doing it. Okay. Helping him pass exams. Was it all online school? No, for back in Oklahoma, he went to public. The thing is, he never really did any of the other work, but when it came to final exams, he had everything he needed to know. So they let him move to the next grade, which was just... Right. So, you guys lived together back in Oklahoma? Yeah. What was life like back there? Hectic. Okay. My, uh, my step, my step nieces, my stepmother's grandchildren lived with us. Okay. Because of stuff that was going on between your mother and your father. My stepmother had custody. Yeah. And we had to, at that point, we were living in a four bedroom with eight people in the house. Jeez. Yeah. And. Did you share room with him then? Yes. Okay. And it absolutely smelled. Because even then, you. Even when he, the bathroom was really just a couple feet away, he wouldn't get up and go. Okay. And what is that? You kind of told me about it yesterday, but you said there was some sort of problem that you had to cause that, or? Yeah. yeah. I mean, you don't I don't know. It. Honestly, no. I just, I, that's what I've assumed. Okay. Because it's, I'm pretty sure it's been basically his whole life since this has been happening. And it's not just that. He's urinated in places back in Oklahoma, in his closet, and dressers. Yeah. Okay. He's, uh, what type of, like, disorders does he have that you're aware of? I know he has ADHD. I believe he has sensory processing. Okay. Um, I was never there for any sort of autism spectrum test, but from what I've seen, I know that that probably was a thing. I also know he was motor and speech impaired. He okay. couldn't run right and was talk right. Okay. So I don't know. So in, I don't know what state Shanda was in when she gave birth to G, but DSS, they normally do an assessment because I've worked with people that have lost custody of older children. And then they had another child and DSS did not immediately take custody of, of that child. Now, if, if it was somebody that had chronic issues, they, they were not able to, like DSS knew that they clearly were not able to, to care for the child. Sometimes in this, they would put like a, there would be a, a red flag. Now, if that person moved far enough away, because DSS in the United States, it's normally county. I've, I've had people move just to like another city 15 minutes up the way, and it's up to that locality to determine do they want to pick up that DSS case or not. Like, so Child Protective Services is not a federal, it's a, it's a local thing where in my area, city of Fredericksburg can vary from Spotsylvania County, can vary from Stafford County, can vary from Caroline County, can vary from King George. And this is just like within a 30 minute and people can move to different counties and it's up to that new system to determine whether they pick this case up or not. Now, you know, if the child is already in custody, they, they have to, because I've worked with people that were in custody from out of state and they they assign a local social worker and 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 all of that, but um, uh, 
So it's my understanding that Timothy was about 14 years old when he came to live with Shanda. They were removed as young children. I don't know exactly how, how old. And um, because the sister talked about remembering being removed. And, uh, uh, and, and somebody mentioned, I mean, if you're in the comments, if you see this video, you, you do not have to say anything. Someone mentioned that this triggered feelings of not being wanted. And uh, that is where sometimes a person can determine their worth or value based on if other people see it. So if my parent validates me, then I can feel worth and value. And that that's the way it's supposed to happen. Like parents are supposed to be validating, loving and, and safe people. But when that doesn't happen, that can mess up a child's internal feeling of self-worth. Self-worth and confidence are different. Self-worth is me, is, is the value I have as a person, the value that I, that I have. Confidence is how I feel about myself. It's like if I, you know, how I how I feel about my ability, that's confidence. Self-worth is is very different. And I've worked with people that were confident but struggled with self-worth or with their value. I've also worked with people that that struggled with both. And 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 I've seen this this a few times. Sh Shanda's love was very conditional. And I think Paul was also trying to. Because I don't think she was proud of Paul. I think she kind of looked down on him. I think he worked at a pizza place. Did he work as at a pizza place? And I I don't think that she um that that she really did that at all. Uh, in my state, adult protective services they don't step in to like they're it's a supportive service unless there's like unless it's pretty major. Um, APS doesn't like you you can make an APS report and they provide you know support, but like it's not like child protective services where children can can be removed. All right. Um, thanks, Karen. Um, and Karen is a lawyer, and Karen has some um some videos covering important topics. All right. Let's keep going. I think when he was younger, he had to have a surgery on his ears to have tubes put in because he has heightened hearing that was very loud noise. That's 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 not tubes put put in would probably be because of chronic ear infections. I've never heard of somebody having tubes tubes because of tubular implants because they heard too much. That's just my thought. I don't not a medical doctor. This could be painful, oh, okay. so too much. Yeah, the fact is that he could hear my mother, my stepmother, talking with a friend about going to a movie with the TV when it was on really high volume. Oh, because okay. one of those sort of pointers. What about you? Do you have any of those sort of things or anything? Uh... I have ADHD. Okay, and I think they said I was diagnosed with sensory processing, but from what my mother has told me, that that's it's just no. What is that? I, I'm not I would not trust Shanda's diagnosis of anyone. I think she minimized everyone else's mental health and issues and ex until it became convenient for her to talk about her own, which she tried and the jury did not buy. Uh, what's sensory processing? It's basically when you overreact to things way too much. Yeah. I guess loud noises and things are okay and bright lights are disturbing for me that's there's not really any of that the only problems i have is when someone's music has a lot of bass drumming in it okay for me that'll feel like someone's smashing my ribs with a mallet okay that's why i don't hardly listen to music very high if it's got uh, bass drums because it hurts yeah that would make sense um did you go to school Yes, I went to the school back in Oklahoma. I graduated from Santa Fe High School. Okay. I just, I've even got the diploma and I stand in my room. Okay. You graduated from high school. What did you kind of do after that? You just... um, I think I know that my father had kicked me out after, like, in, I think, May two years ago or so. So, like, 20, May of 20? Is that 20? Yeah. And... Due to COVID, the graduation had been postponed to July, and 
I had been managed, I had managed to get my bio mom's number at that point and was capable of talking to her and telling her how all of this had happened. Yeah. And I also asked some of the things that about that, what dad had told me, the whole, did he, did you really not care? Right. And from what he told, and I'm pretty sure it's scientifically impossible that she had her tubes undone for, for Gabriel, which from what I'm guessing, that's an impossibility, isn't it? Oh, okay. So I, he's, 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 he's a- poor, poor baby. Yes. Um, you can have your tubes untied and potentially like, like the chance, um, but somebody can have their tubes untied and possibly be able to, to, to still have more, more children. Uh, I don't, wow. Um, I agree with, I believe it was Lisa that was talking about him seeming coached because I think this is what mom told him to say. And, and Kat, thank you for the super sticker. I appreciate it. Everything y'all do, it helps support my ability to be here and stream. And so thank you. Thank you so much for that. Um, And let me just continue to move forward. Um, Even the jury thought that Paul showed signs of, of autism and not having, so I'm just giving my general opinion, my general thoughts. That is a possibility. I'm, I'm not sure. Trauma impacts the way that the brain develops and forms. And so sometimes it can be difficult to parse out, develop, because he likely experienced significant trauma right as the brain was was developing. And we'll never know, had had he not experienced what he experienced, would he, you know, like, would, would, would he be different? We'll, we'll never know that. Also, stress can trigger genetic things because autism has a, has a genetic component. And um, so if there was any type of genetic predisposition toward, toward uh, for autism, and the fact that Timothy, I believe people have said that Timothy did have autism, I could see Paul possibly having having autism as well. And like I said, the jury also thought. Now, a diagnosis does not excuse someone's behavior. It just helps me understand. Just helps me understand. I bet you he did have to pay something where we don't I don't I don't know that for sure. I don't imagine that that sh- Shanda would let him be there and him not contribute in in some way. I I just can't imagine her her doing that. Excuse me. And nicely. Oh, really? Did did he say that? Oh, if he said that, good gosh. Oh. And so psychopath isn't a diagnosis. Yeah. And, and so psychopath, so it would be antisocial personality disorder or possibly conduct disorder. Uh, it, it makes me mad when professionals use terms like now, sometimes they might say psychopathic traits and um, you have to be careful if that lack of empathy, if that's um, so there are people with autism that have empathy. Somebody got mad about that on another video. <laughs> so people with, with autism can have empathy. Sometimes people with autism have trouble seeing things outside of, of themselves. And so um, I would just, I would just be interested if any of that went, went, um, went undiagnosed. And then also I will tell you what's more likely is that somebody that has been harmed themselves, um, not, like I said, most people that are harmed do not harm other people but someone that has been harmed themselves. And then if mom has him do this, because he might be thinking that's what helped me that maybe the, you know, I've, I've worked with people. Mm, gee, uh, I'm going to say it. I've worked with people that because someone else took it too far, they thought that's what they needed. Like they struggled with safe parenting. So with a child where that was maybe had been physically harmed, where an adult took like that, that's not discipline. That's, that's, that's harm. And, um, and then that's what that child thought they needed to get their behavior in check. And, and so that's where somebody can 
there's a re-traumatizing aspect to trauma that, that can happen where a person can reenact the stuff that happened to them. In children, it's more like play. In relationships, it can be more like getting in a relationship that maybe isn't safe. It, it's not always like this. Uh, those are my thoughts. That's what I kind of think about that. Let's keep going with this. A little miracle child. Fair enough. He is a blessing to this world. Yeah. And I wonder if some of that is Shanda's words too, because I think she adored G more than everyone else. Is your mom feeling like that? Certainly. That he's a blessing. Of course. Yeah. She loves him so much. Yeah. She loved every single one of us, but my dad's controlish, freaky nature was just, he didn't want her having any contact and screwing all of his control up. And there was a thing back in Oklahoma where I had to, I had problems with emotional release. I, I was so terrified of him that I didn't ever want to have released any of the negative emotions I ever had around him. It was, there were times where I wanted to say no, but I was so terrified that I just couldn't. Yeah. Here, I can release my anger. And I do it in the right ways. I never do it any, in any way that I'm not supposed to. Okay. And if I unintentionally cop an attitude with my mother. You see him keep looking at the camera. I wonder if it's a little video camera. Hmm. I'm, I'm going to keep going. I, I realized it and I apologize telling you that I did not mean to, that I just slipped a small amount and I'm going to fill away. Do something to calm down. Would there be any sort of consequence for your mom if you would have slipped up with her attitude wise or how that work? Um, there were times when I would cop an attitude that was unnecessary and she would have me get off devices for maybe 15 minutes because usually that was what it was revolved around because I, I'll be honest, I have a, I have an addiction to my devices. Okay. I, it's, it's not something I can really do without, I guess. Yeah. I, don't know. I, I never had not very much of that back in Oklahoma. Yeah. My dad was strict. He didn't even give me a phone. My, my sister and my stepsister had phones before I did. And that was due to the fact that he could not raise a male. And at first, he thought not that the ADHD was just ADD. Because, like my mother, I could hyper focus, which is actually a symptom of ADHD. All right. And then, so now you're in work. And I'll be yesterday about how you're paying bills. And yep. And unlike, yeah. And unlike, yeah. And unlike my step, my father, she doesn't take, force me to give her half of my paycheck. Mm -hmm. He forced that on me. Yeah. And I was working basically minimum wage so, at both. Yeah. That's tough. It was nightmarish. And the thing is that my stepmother didn't even know about that until after I had moved and I had told her. Okay. And she apologized so heavily because she she was just going to want some stuff to help with rent at times. Yeah. And when he asked to borrow money, he never paid it back. And my mother has paid it back every time, whether it's in a way like paying for the bike payments for my electric trying to bike because, you know, we put a down payment and then we have to do the consecutive payments for yeah. it. Was that your first, would you consider that like your first big purchase on your own? Your electric bike or have you purchased a uh, more expensive thing? More expensive. And I think the interviewer is just seeing how he talks about other topics versus when they talk about more, more stressful things. I'm going to see, that. I'm going to see about fast forwarding a little bit. All right, let's go forward a little bit and see how this goes. Right, he always been staying there. No, he didn't always. Okay. But the thing was, the loft bed, if you've noticed, yeah. the screws and stuff, that was his doing. Okay. And we couldn't get it safely back. Yeah. So he's been sleeping in the closet. Yes, we made sure that it was cleaned. He had a mattress in there, but then he decided to rip off the uh, cover, like a sort of plastic cover we'd put on there to keep it from getting smelly and yeah disgusting. 
We want it. We always want it. What's best for him? We. It's. I don't know. So you guys decide to move him into the closet. There's an alarm on the door. Is that so? What's that for? When you would try and sneak, because if you notice, there was also one on the garage door. That was also because, yeah, there's some food in there that he would try and sneak. Right. And it wasn't just that he was hungry <laughs> at some point for those. It was yeah. that it, he wanted something sweet. He just, right. and yeah, at times he would be taking stuff that was going to have plans for food, actual food. Yeah, I agree. I see exactly what you're saying. And it, I don't know about the whole, I don't know, just bread at some points, but we did start giving him actual better food. When, when you talk about the bedroom being moved into that closet, is that your idea or is that your mom's idea? That was my mother's. Yes. And, uh, so how long do you think he was staying in that closet? Um, a couple of weeks, maybe. Okay. I think it's, I think, we truly had started activating the alarm on the door every night after he, we had found that he would sneak out and get back up on yeah. to his loft bed. Where, like I said, that thing was dangerous at that point because he had been screwing around with the bolts and screws. And okay. I'm going to make myself bigger just so we can chat. And if y'all have questions for me, especially questions about anything that we've seen, Anything that's been going on with this case, please let me know. With this, I do think that Shanda possibly had some narcissistic traits. And I say that gently just because that did not come out to my knowledge in any of her diagnoses or anything. But what I can tell you is that individuals with narcissistic traits are really good at getting people on their side, really, really good at it. And I think they can change. Yes, hold on. Parenting moment. You can do YouTube kids. Okay. <laughs> Y'all know about 2.45 to three o'clock, that's my kiddo's time to, to get the iPad. <laughs> and so, um, but with Shanda, now, I think some of the stuff he's saying about dad, it, it could be 100% true. He could have he had two horrible options. And it's weird. And Shanda might have liked him coming to her. I'm just being honest. Because then now, oh, now you see how bad your dad is. And he lied about me. And I'm so great. I think Paul knew that what they were doing was wrong. And yet I think he trusted his mother. Now, I still I still think that he should uh, face some type of... Con like, I, I do think that he's likely going to get jail time. I, I could be wrong. First degree child, Michigan. See, they, they knew exactly what I was looking for. Um, uh, okay, so it's a felony that is punishable up to life in prison or any number of years. It's a class A felony. And okay, so um, that is the max sentence that he would be facing is is life in prison. I think he'll probably get closer to 20 years, I'm guessing. But if I could guess, I would think it would probably be about about 20 years. That's that's what I think would um, that's what I think he's he's probably facing. He played a significant role in his brother's harm. And if at any point he had, he had um, come up and said something uh, that, that could have saved Timothy's life. I don't think he had a good relationship with his other siblings. I could be wrong, but I don't think, I don't think he had a good relationship with, um, I could be wrong, but I, I don't think he had a good relationship with them. And I personally see signs. So Stockholm syndrome, not in the DSM. It's something that we use to explain uh, a victim in a situation that identifies with their abuser and kind of takes on their thoughts, their their traits. Now, I do think that he should still be held responsible for his part. 
if he was under the age of 18, I still would have, but like this happened, I think he was 20. He was 19. Who I think he was like 19 or 20 when, when all of this happened, I know he was 20 at the time of, of the arrest. Okay. Y'all are putting some great comments down here. Oh, yes. Yes. So people with, with narcissistic traits, they like, they like feeling needed, but when they're actually needed, because that puts too much pressure and they often can't, um, can't live up to that. Are you talking about Paul? So I think Paul would have been fine with Shanda. I don't think she harmed him in any, like once he was there, it sounds like things might've been now verbally. I don't know. I don't know how things were for him emotionally or verbally. I could see her talking down to him. I don't know. I don't, I don't know what, what his, what his life was like. For some reason, she turned all of her ugh on to Timothy and that's just not okay. Deacon Fatal, which, which parent, which parents are you talking? The, uh, the father is in a different state. And I don't think, I don't think the state of Michigan is going to do anything with, with the father, if that's what you're talking about. And I do believe she does have her own history of trauma that does not excuse or justify anything. And I, I do not think that excuses or justifies anything. Uh, I could not stomach her attorney trying to throw her own history out when we were talking about Timothy, uh, like at, at, at her sentencing, I just, y'all, y'all, I, I still haven't watched whatever, whatever the, the attorney said. I just, I just can't do it. I can't, I didn't do it. Um, it's, I've got to the end of my empathy and compassion for her. And now I just want to move forward with uh, continuing to be like to just put this out here for justice for Timothy. And then also uh, in looking at Paul's sentencing, just sharing some of some of my thoughts with that. I agree. I think he was very desperate to please his mom. Totally agree with that. Narcissists lack the ability to introspect, especially like the full. Remember narcissism, it's a spectrum. Okay. And I'm gonna have to look up the, so I, I work with, I know I have looked up the ethos den, I'm so bad, yes. Ethos Danlos syndrome. Y'all let me know if I'm saying that wrong. I have a special like error message for when I make an error message. So we do not know if Paul has this. Okay. But we are just two people. I more more mentioned this in the chat. And so I want to take a look at it. The symptoms, joint hypermobility, Soft, stretchy, or fragile, fragile skin, slow slash poor wound healing, chronic pain, chronic fatigue, easy bruising, headaches. Okay. Uh, ethers, eth yeah, Ellers, Ellers Danlos, I think. Ellers Danlos. I could be saying that wrong. Okay. Hmm. So I don't, I don't know. Uh, the, the thing that came to my mind first, Ooh, did I not share my screen? I thought I was sharing my screen. Y'all, <laughs> I was not sharing my screen. <laughs> so this is what I was looking at that I thought y'all were looking at with me. Y'all, y'all were not looking at it with me. I was looking at it all by myself. Ooh, I do have some one for that. We'll, we'll go on ahead and do that. Okay. So this is, this is the correct way um, to share my screen. All right. So these were those symptoms that I read and how it's diagnosed. So I don't, I don't know. It did remind me of the hyper, hyperthyroidism. Let's look up that hyper. 
Cleveland Clinic. Overactive thyroid. Do, do, do. Metabolism sped up. A rapid heartbeat, weight loss, increased appetite, and anxiety. Those are the common symptoms. Um, someone's thyroid can be hypo, and that's where medical conditions can get misdiagnosed as mental health conditions. So if I work with somebody that is complaining of like chronic fatigue and and all of these other conditions and, and things, I'll sometimes just like, hey, make sure to get a physical, make sure they check your levels <laughs> to make sure that we're not missing anything. Because I work with some people with hypothyroidism that have difficulty with um, managing appetite and have difficulty with um, uh, weight gain. And, and it's because their, their thyroid isn't regulated the way that it's supposed to. And so, um, making sure that they're taking care of that can be really, really helpful. Um, I did want to share something. So let's, okay. Jesse Hildebrandt did a amazing, phenomenal interview. And I have the full link in the description. And I want to share this little, this, this little segment, this little part where she's just talking about being careful when we're shocked with stuff like this. I mean, there's so many things that I, I hope that people can take away from this. Um, I think one is the less shocked we are, because this is a shocking story for a lot of people, but the thing that happens when we are shocked is that it removes us from the reality of what happened. And so I think the less shocked we are and the more we humanize these experiences, the more that we can see maybe small parts of those things happening in our own lives. And so we can either, you know, go into therapy or reparent ourselves or read, uh, like kind of prepare ourselves for how these things can play out in our own lives, um, maybe to like significantly lesser degrees. But um, I think that was something that when I would speak to people, people were just like, I cannot, like they just couldn't un understand how this could happen. And the more and more we, we sit in that space of, I just can't understand, the more we miss an opportunity to learn and grow from these experiences. Couldn't have said it better myself. I, and that's why I wanted to start with just some of those ground rules of just wanting to talk about this from not like a black or white perspective, all good or all bad. There were so many comments that were just like, I don't know, Paul's this and dad's this. And instead of, in my opinion, this, this is what I think. And, or this is what I would have done. Or that's not going to make me as upset if I'm sitting here like, hey. Like, like when I, when I approach a situation like that, that is going to make my, my heart beat more. And that, that shock, it disconnects us emotionally. And a part of that is for our own survival. We, we don't like looking at these horrific things. Now, like if, if y'all are law nerds or if you like true crime or, or things like that, sometimes we, we enjoy taking a look at this, but we're seeing another side that a lot of people try to ignore or walk away from. And this is where I really like a uh, grizzly true crime. I really like her channel because she shares the red flags of toxic relationships or like, Hey, like this is, these are some signs, or there might be a parent that has a toxic co-parent and you need to take a look at how can I make sure that my child is safe? Is my child in therapy? Like, what can I do to help make sure that we're doing this as safely as we can? Now, people can be a bad, like a people can do things that I don't agree with. So there's a, there's a thin line sometimes between what we determine to be harm. So there are parents that sometimes they might, so like, uh, 
locking the cabinets doesn't mean that a child will automatically get removed if they are being fed at, you know, if they are getting enough meals and, and all those things. There are people that try to punish using food. So in the ferreter case, I want to say that the child, like, so that the, the, the child, the male child in that case, he would be given like a really bland dinner while the rest of the family had this, had this, you know, great dinner. And even the sister in that case said that it was very difficult for her. Like she knew that she could do the exact same thing her brother did and she wouldn't get in trouble, but he did. But it was the lens that the parent was was viewing them through. And uh, this is where I just, I, I try to... Um, to share this information, to put these things out here, try to see what we can learn from these situations and 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 how we we uh, we can move forward. And um, all right, I'm just checking the chat. Mm, how does someone heal? And I think Paul's road and journey, I think each person has their own path. So I think, uh, the brother and sister that gave wit, um, impact uh, victim impact statements at Shanda's sentencing, I think the two of them will live with survivor's guilt. They'll live with regret. And that's where I think a really good therapist is going to try to help them and, and the sentencing might have helped them start the process of, and journey of moving forward. It, it can sometimes be because it doesn't bring your your brother back. And that's that's what you want, what you really, really want. And there's a journey to accepting it just it just won't happen. So that's where I did a video on traumatic grief, tra uh, traumatic losses, because that type of loss, it's different. It's it, it's not the normal denial, anger. It's not that normal grief cycle. It is like the sister described, it's being completely numb and on autopilot for six months and then finally starting to heat, to, to feel. And then, so the journey just looks very, very different. Um, I think for Paul, he has to accept his responsibility. And so I'll be very interested to see if Paul gives a statement at his sentencing, if he says something to, to the judge and not like a manipulative statement or a statement that's trying to get less time, but a a statement where he's admitting to his part and that he's accepting whatever punishment the judge puts forward. And then I don't know how the Michigan correction system works. There are some where people are able to get uh, they're able to get treatment inside while they're incarcerated. So I, I have a family member that was incarcerated a, a few times and there are, there are programs, there are things that people have access to. Now, like I said, every prison, every system is different. Uh, a lot of prisons are privatized. And so sometimes it's based on the company that runs the prison, how much resources, like what are, what are they putting into it? To me, services can really help reduce the recidivism because we don't want people to come back. So with Paul, I would want him to work on his trauma and then get out of victim mode, get out of that victim mentality that nothing's my fault life just happens. I don't have control over, over anything that, that he would become a survivor. And, and in that accepting, I, I can control my thoughts, my behavior. I do have control over me. There are things I can do. I will not stand silent and, and watch somebody else be harmed. I will not participate in harm of others. I now realize that that wasn't love. And so some people commented on the fact that in that video that I showed that Paul talked about how much he loved Timothy. And I think he was loving the way his mom loved, if that makes sense. So I think Shanda showed her love, but it will, I don't, mm, mm. I don't, the, the other children did not talk about feeling loved by her and like Sarah mentioned before, I think her love was very, very conditional. And I think Paul 
desperately wanted her love. And he will have to live with what he did for the rest of his life. And that is, that is, that is going to be hard. Uh, I have some concerns about Gypsy. I'm just being honest for me. Now, I don't, I, I don't know the woman. I don't know her. I do hope that she's in therapy. I hope that she is like working on, on herself because I think she played a very active role in what happened to, to her mom. If y'all know Gypsy Rose, I did another video. Um, if you want to, if you want some history on, on that, like, and, and if you're if you're into true crime, you you've already heard about that horrific case. I do think that cases like Gypsy Rose, I get a little concerned when people start profiting off of their crime. So I, I wouldn't want Paul to write a book. Like, don't don't write a book. Don't don't start. Oh, like work work on you. Work on your stuff. <laughs> work on you, and um try to find a way to safely integrate back into society if he's ever able able to do that. I, I don't know what what the judge is going to, to sentence him with. Um, you're, so per person isn't blocked. I don't know what happened. Okay, good. <laughs> yeah. 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 You're, you're not blocked. If I missed a comment, I'm, I might have. I'm catching up on the comments. Yes. So Vistaril is a really common, it's kind of, they realize that Benadryl without the, like that it has this calming effect. And I've worked with a lot of people that have taken uh, Vistaril. I prefer Vistaril over the stronger, the more addictive things like Xanax and, and stuff like that. I, I prefer if somebody does need a PRN medication. Now, I'm not a medical doctor. Their, their medical doctor or prescriber does that. But I, I have worked with clients that are on um, that are on Vistaril. <laughs> That's hilarious that, that the notification just came through. Yes. And so I do know that Shanda was diagnosed with bipolar disorder. Mm. <laughs> she's she's now on a mood stabilizer. Uh, I, I could have seen OCD, but I don't I, oh. now. So I don't I don't know what her manic like. I don't I don't know what that manic phase looks like to her. The jail has seen her every day now because I would have thought it would have been more anxiety based. That's that's just what what I would have guessed. Often bipolar disorder can run in families. And so, yes. And if I said, and hopefully I, I uh, did they, them pronouns. If I did not do they, them with Jesse, please head, not, not the heart. Uh, yes. So I don't work in prisons. Uh, if I was working with, Paul, after he was out of incarceration, it would first start with building that, that therapeutic relationship, creating a safe space, and then working on regulating emotions. He doesn't seem emotionally mature to me. He comes off childlike to me. And then I would also want to see what his psychological said. Because does he have an intellectual disability? Because he does come off young to me. Now, I don't know if that's because of in stressful situations. Because sometimes we can regress in stressful situations and come off more childlike. So I don't, I don't know how he is in normal settings. Uh, I've had people come into my office. And at first, I was like, oh, my gosh, what's going on? And then once they settled and they were less stressed, there was a completely different presentation. And what I would do is first start with um, maybe some some anger management, uh, but you don't start with the hardest stuff first. <laughs> so like, uh, and let's let's work on keeping you out of how you live with with what you did. How do you accept responsibility? I don't believe that shame necessarily. Now a little bit of shame might help stop you from doing it again. Uh, but the shame of I'm the worst person in the world and I don't know. Now, what he did was horrific. There's a difference between guilt and shame. And I did a whole video on guilt versus shame. And so, 
Yes, yes, yes. All right. I am really behind on the comments. Um, and so Jesse's interview, I put that full link down there. And Jesse just, good gosh. Yes, Jesse is is phenomenal. Um, the the detective did a really good job, I think, in coming off non judgmental. Like the, the the detective is just like, help me understand. the The detective isn't acting like I'm looking. I'm talking to a monster, or like no matter how the detective felt about it, to me he came off extremely calm. He, he came off just, I think he came off very well. All right. I'm going to try. Welcome to all my UK. So it's like, um, I hope y'all have, I probably already had evening tea. <laughs> I'm 20% British. And so I have a strong, just personal connection to the, to the UK and my earrings say queen. So these are queen today. <laughs> uh, yes, yes, yes. Sometimes I wear Afro because I have two that say Afro too. So sometimes I wear Afro queen, but yes, these say queen. I believe that she kept little man separate from, I don't think she let little man interact with Timothy is my understanding. And I don't, I don't know how much uh, little man saw. Now I think, I think little man is also because um, the father the father died. So little man's father and uh, his mother is now incarcerated for the rest of her life. And so, and he, I think he might be 10 now. And so 10, 11, something like that, maybe. Oh, good gosh. That was 2022. He was eight. So he might be nine or 10, something like that. Yes. Maybe mm, y'all don't, don't try me. Don't have me doing math. I'm good at math, but not like on the spot like this. <laughs> I have to write it down. So he's between like nine and 10, I'm guessing. All right. Let me know if y'all have any questions because we're starting to get to the the end of the stream. I'm not, I'm not a, I'm not a fan, per but like not like in a bad way. It's just, I hope that she heals. And I think there's a lot of healing that has to happen. And I don't think that happens publicly in my personal opinion. I think that's a private journey and she is monetizing that journey. And like, it's, it's a thing that people do. It's a thing that people do. So I would never get on here. So that moment I was struggling <laughs> with all of those emotions, the video probably would have done very well. If I had got on here and been like, oh my gosh, this is so, I don't know. If I had, if I had let y'all see how much I was struggling with this case, that video might've gotten a lot of views and stuff. But like, I, I have real life clients. Like I, I, my job, what I do is I run a private practice and I do therapy with people and I don't think it would be helpful for those people to see me breaking down. Now, if you do go back and watch the the sentencing, you will see my, my eyes get get teary. You will see. Um, I I don't think I cried, but like I was doing everything I could. My thoughts. It was difficult for me to finish my thoughts because it was a very very triggering sentencing, and I was using all of my skills. I just, I wasn't expecting it to be that powerful and that intense. And it just was. Uh, Visceral is not over the counter. Normally that has to be prescribed because Benadryl, whatever, let me, wait a minute, let me look, let me look. Uh, generic of Benadryl. Yeah, yeah. So the Benadryl is di from, mm -hmm, di, D I P H E N H Y. D R A hydro die. Don't get me lying. I'm gonna put it in the chat. <laughs> the generic of Benadryl is that. 
and Vistaril is different. So normally you have to get a prescription for, for Vistaril. Don't take Benadryl, like Pete, like talk to a pharmacist, talk to medical doctor, like don't, this is not medical advice. <laughs> but people can get a prescription for Vistaril from their medical doctor or from uh, their uh, psychiatrist, if that's something they, they need to, to discuss, okay? I just, I just, so I, I didn't watch the, the documentary. I thought I would. I did not. I did not. I decided not to. Uh, I also didn't watch all of the, what, Natalia Grace. I didn't watch all of, of her documentary either. And yes, she's on Lamictal as well. And she got upset when that was spelled incorrectly, when her lawyer confused her S for a C or his own S for a C. Like she, like, and Dr. G explains. So I adore Dr. G explains. I did watch his video covering the sentencing and he noted how the only emotion you see during that whole thing, besides her emotionally disconnecting, was when things were, were when she was correcting those things. Like you could tell, it was almost, I, I don't know that he said contempt, but you, you could tell that she got emotional about that with fixing all those things. Correct. Visceral hydroxyzine must be prescribed. That is correct. Safety has to be felt. Safety must, must, must be felt. So I can physically be safe and not feel safe. And that's why emotional safety is also important along with physical safety. Now doing the bare minimum of like making sure children have enough food, clothing, you know, like all those things. And then emotional safety is really, really important as well. With my, I work with uh, children and teens and it's always my goal for someone within their family to be a safe place if they can. I have some people that it's really hard for me to work with them. Um, uh, it's, it's really hard for, for me to work with them. Um, okay, I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna do that. All right. And so for anyone that's watching, for anyone that, uh, that uh, sees my channel, sees my, uh, my stuff. I am an affirming therapist. Like, so those little flags, like it's not, I'm, I'm an affirming therapist because somebody put that me, um, affirming they, them pronouns that that was difficult for them. And so no problem. If people have to exit, you don't have to announce your departure. You, you don't like <laughs> this is free content. People can feel free to support whichever creators they enjoy. So, all right. Dr. G is awesome. And it's not the other G. So there is like a Dr. Grand Grande. Dr. G explains. Phenomenal. I really enjoy his, his content. I did watch the Maya documentary. That was when I was, because I think I covered the trial and everything. Very, very triggering. They went more into some of the CPS issues, more so, I think, than the hospital. But yes. Let me know. <laughs> like, like, this is this is not an airport. <laughs> and the funny thing, like when people comment, it makes the algorithm think they like me. <laughs> and so like if, if people really, really do not like this content, the best thing to do is to watch as little as possible and just to like quietly show themselves the door. If they decide to publicly announce their, their departure, like it, it, it is what it is. I am so appreciative to this community. This is a safe community. I am a, I'm just, I just, uh, I try to create a safe space for, for everyone. We don't all have to agree. So if people are in the comments and they don't agree with that, they don't, we, we, we do not have to, to all agree. Uh, but there are some things that I am very, very passionate about. Uh, I work with many, many um, LGBTQ clients, and most of them have thoughts of not wanting to be alive on a regular basis because living in a heteronormative world is just very, very painful for them. And so um, I am a safe place for them, thankfully. And anytime, like if I mess up, I invite the the correction. Like I, I invite them to let me know. Uh, I am heterosexual. I am cisgender. 
uh, I have my my pronouns in my in she her, but like I I have my my pronouns listed, so I have all like the reminders of like hey, <laughs> but people are people, and that is fine. Um, yes, behavioral analysts, yes. So me and Spidey, like uh, he is he's really phenomenal. Uh, I would love to get to partner with with him at at some point. Um, so Spidey with Behavioral Arts, uh, I I follow his content, um, and he is he is great too. <sighs> All right, <laughs> y'all truly are the best. Like that's why I decide to like give y'all a Saturday to to go live. Uh, so people have mixed feelings. To me, his content changed. His, his content changed. If you go back and look at some of his old content, and my content changed too. And the algorithm likes drama, and the algorithm likes. So I just, I just won't do it. I just won't. I just, I just won't do it. And so, not intentionally. Like I'll, I might post something that people disagree with, and then they argue in the comments. But I don't. To me, I don't intentionally incite that or anything. And so um, uh, he he is like, he has a dark sense of humor. I, I could see him um, like being able to speak and pronounce on, you know, do things. But um, if you could see the comments, people do it all the time. <laughs> I get at least one or two a week. And it could be for random things. So people didn't like my comment about my earrings last week. Like some one person didn't like it. And they wrote a very, very just, I don't know. I, I deleted the comment. <laughs> uh, somebody else, they were like, they called me PR for the Adelson family. And I was like, did you watch my video? PR for the, how? They were like, you got paid for this. Like, I can't support this creator. And it's like, what are you talking about? I'm pretty sure that was a troll. Like, how could that not be a troll? I don't, I don't even understand. Uh, but um, uh, behavioral analysts, because I am not trained as a behavior analyst. And that's, I'm, I'm a clinical psychologist. So I use testing and, and all those things. And so um, uh, um I, I'm, I'm a very different type of provider and really my goal is to educate here. There is so much misinformation online and there's so many things. And I, I appreciate it because people have said like, I learned so much and that's why I do this. And people might click on the video, not even knowing, Hey, I'm, I'm going to learn something and, and it, it happens. And so people, people are funny. Um, and so, and, and so there are creators that we like, there are creators that people don't like. And so like, um, uh, I, I get, so I did change my content cause I used to not only do the legal analysis. I used to do just general psych evals or sorry, psych videos. Those like the algorithm could not find the user that wanted that video. <laughs> The algorithm easily finds people that that like this one. And um, and so uh, the uh, the black first, welcome, welcome. Uh, I'm glad that everyone is here. And so, like, I, I will create a I will speak up for people that maybe can't be as vocal about where they stay. I don't know. Like I will, I will speak up for, for people. Uh, <laughs> like Karen, Karen, where, where does that come from? Like, and I, I, I think it's, I think, I think they're trolls. It can't, it can't not be a troll because the person, my video wasn't favorable to any of the Adelsons. Like, I don't think they watched the video. I don't think they watched it at all. Uh, thank you. Thank you. I do have some psych nerds. Uh, earrings coming today. I found some. Thank you. Some people DM'd me. People that that make earrings. If they end up being something that I can get in bulk, then I might put them on on my website. But we will see. I do have. Um, so I'm gonna do a little self promotion. If you don't want that, just pick up. But like, um, I do have uh, my merch in my YouTube store. 
I do have a book, Turning Crisis into Clarity, How to Survive or Thrive in the Midst of Uncertainty. And that book, I really tried to make it very practical, where even, you know, like if you're if you don't really know that that much about psychology, you can you can you can do that. I am a 80s baby and so how rude. <laughs> how rude. <laughs> I think it to myself. I just delete I get so much joy out of deleting comments like y'all don't know. <laughs> Cuz one person they were they were mad that their comment wasn't there <laughs> and they commented again. And then YouTube has this glorious thing where I can just, I can just, it's called a uh, hide, hide user from channel. Now they can come back on a different account. And if they want to continue to engage with my content, they can, if they see an ad, I get a percentage of that revenue. So it is what it is. <laughs> Was this who had blank face and no emotion? Let me know. Um, blame it. I wanted this one. Some people live to create drama. And when people that live that way are operating out of their amygdala, they are in survival brain. And I don't, I don't live there. I live from my prefrontal cortex when I can. Y'all know I'm a little neuro spicy. And so like I I get I get I have random moments and these are live. I get to edit these out when I do the, the Tuesday video, but yes. Um, okay. And, and Dominique, so I, all I said was I wasn't sure what evidence they, and I don't have to know, like the, they've been really tight lipped with what evidence they have. And so that was, that was all, that was all I said. Um, I love, so the only place I don't block people is on TikTok because TikTok, it's way too easy to just like switch between accounts. And so I, I don't do it. I don't block on, on TikTok. I just del delete the comment. Well, thank you, Uncle Hank. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh oh, oh, Sarah, you, you didn't have to. Pablo Escobar had a lot of hippos on him. <laughs> okay, I'm I'm gonna have to do like a, a gold star swoop. Um, Sarah, you have you have won the chat, and if you had done it in all caps, Nightbot wouldn't wouldn't have done anything. And so, on that note. Thank you all so much for being here. I so appreciate, I, I can't, I can't say it enough. I appreciate each and every one of you. I am now able to use my earnings from YouTube to pay for my student loans. Um, I've been paying off my student loans since 2010 and uh, they're not paid off yet. I started with almost 200,000 of debt and I, I have some money left to, to pay. And um, with with the revenue that I get from here, uh, I'm able to make extra payments on on, on my student loans. Uh, I do not qualify for the special loan forgiveness. I've never worked for a private company. I've only worked, no, public. I've never worked for a public company. So I don't qualify for some of the loan forgiveness that's, that's out there. And so I so, so, so appreciate each and every one of you. If you're, if you're on other platforms, I'm on, you know, TikTok, Instagram. If you're not there, don't worry about it. But I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Bye.